Are we taking vitamin D wrong? In today's video, I'm going to share what I recently learned about how we absorb vitamin D. I've been on a quest to optimize my health since I had my first discernible MS symptoms back in 2006, and as I learn more, I want to share it with you. A low vitamin D has long been associated with the risk of developing MS and disease activity. There are many large observational studies such as the Nurses' Health Study and the Epic Natural History Study showing that those with higher levels of vitamin D have a decreased risk of developing MS. The higher the level of vitamin D equates to a lower chance of developing MS. And low levels of vitamin D are also strongly associated with development of type 2 lesions. Hmm. Low levels of vitamin D are also associated with many diseases, including cancers, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, infectious diseases, mental disorders, and autoimmune disorders such as type 1 diabetes, Crohn's disease, and MS. It is super important for our brain cell function, immune function, and muscle function. Oh, and calcium absorption too for bone health. In fact, I did another video on vitamin D and I'll put the link above and in the description below if you'd like to check it out after this one. Many of us supplement with vitamin D to keep our levels up, but did you know that many nutrients don't work in isolation? They rely on other nutrients to be effective. Before we dive in, I am not a doctor and I'm not providing medical advice. I'm sharing information with you based on the research that I've read. Please check with your doctors and get your vitamin D levels checked and work with them on if you need a supplement and what the appropriate dosage might be for you. So I went down a rabbit hole and I found out that many of us are not able to absorb vitamin D efficiently. There is a simple change that we can make to help us absorb our vitamin D supplements better that I'll get to in a minute. But first, let's look into who needs vitamin D and why it's so important. According to the Cleveland Clinic, about a billion people worldwide have vitamin D deficiency, while 50% of the population has vitamin D insufficiency. Approximately 35% of all adults in the United States have vitamin D deficiency. Well, that's a lot of us. And if you live in a more northern area, you could be at greater risk of being deficient. Supplementing with vitamin D can improve fatigue, improve mood, reduce inflammation, improve anxiety, it can help improve sleep, and it could help with pain. So it's not just important for people with MS to have an adequate vitamin D level, it can virtually help everyone. Where do we get vitamin D? Mostly from the sun. It's actually a hormone that our bodies make when our skin is exposed to natural daylight. We can also get it from some enriched foods and from taking supplements. I'm filming this video in the middle of winter here in the U.S., and many of us live in areas where it gets cold, so we're not spending as much time outside, and when we do go outside, we tend to be covered up to stay warm. So our skin isn't getting the sun exposure and our vitamin D levels dip even more. When I was reading the research about vitamin D, I found that when we take it, we don't just raise our vitamin D levels, it actually affects our other nutrient levels and processes. When we take vitamin D, it requires magnesium to be used in processes in our bodies. When we take supplements of D, it uses up some of our magnesium for it to be effective. We may be increasing our vitamin D doses because our levels aren't coming up, but then we're depleting our magnesium levels even more. And also unfortunate is there currently is not a good way for our doctors to test our magnesium levels. Once the magnesium is absorbed, it's distributed throughout the body for use and storage. Only 0.8% of magnesium is found in the blood. The rest is in soft tissue, muscle, and bone. So blood tests may not be able to accurately reflect the magnesium levels in our systems. When magnesium levels get depleted, we can't effectively use the vitamin D we're taking. So the supplements may not work for us as well as they could. I've been living with MS for a long time and I never heard this before. In fact, one of the studies I read suggested that magnesium deficiency may be the cause of low vitamin D. I was so surprised. I had not seen or heard this before. 
Although more studies are needed, one study concluded that magnesium is often inadequate and several other factors are known to impair magnesium supply. For example, diuretic use, diabetes, chronic alcohol consumption, and stress factors. So our vitamin D supplements deplete the needed magnesium to work and other factors can deplete magnesium as well. And magnesium is really important too. Magnesium is a critical mineral in the human body governing the activities of hundreds of enzymes encompassing approximately 80% of known metabolic functions. And all those things that I mentioned earlier that vitamin D can help with, fatigue, mood, inflammation, anxiety, sleep, and pain management, magnesium may be able to help with them too. So how do we improve our vitamin D absorption? There are a few easy ways for us to tweak how we take vitamin D to help it be more effective. Liquid vitamin D is more easily absorbed than capsules. D3 is better than D2. Taking it with meals helps because it's a fat-soluble vitamin, which means we need to take it with a fat source. And we can take a magnesium supplement too. Magnesium citrate and magnesium glyconate are reported to be the most easily absorbed, but check with your doctor on the dosing of vitamin D and magnesium that might be best for you. Taking too much of either can be a problem, so please don't just add this supplement without some guidance. For instance, magnesium citrate can have a laxative effect, which could be problematic if one of your MS symptoms is poor bowel control. This is the vitamin D that I take, and I'll link it below if you'd like to check it out. I'm not currently taking a magnesium supplement, but I will be talking with my doctor about it, and I'll let you know via my newsletter if she recommends one to me. You're signed up for my newsletter, right? I send one email a week with more tips on living well with MS and chronic illness, and I also include yummy plant-based recipes each week. You can sign up using the link in the description below. And there's another way we may improve our magnesium, and it's my preferred way to get nutrients. We can eat more foods that are rich in magnesium. And big surprise, many of the great sources of magnesium are plant-based. Here are some of the best sources of magnesium. This is not a complete list, it's just some of the higher sources. I looked on the Google, and then I checked in with Chronometer to see which foods were best. Chronometer is a great tool to look at the nutrition value of our foods, and I'm going to link that below too if you'd like to use it. The first is cocoa powder, and if you make it into hot cocoa with almond milk, it can provide approximately 14% of our magnesium per day, and I'll put my hot cocoa recipe in the description below. Then is spinach. One cup of raw spinach can provide almost 45% of our daily magnesium needs, so eat those spinach salads. A tablespoon of pumpkin seeds can add another 10%. So add those to your salads and soups. Amaranth, which is a grain, has almost 44% in each cup, and it's also high in iron. Bonus. Black beans contain almost 23% in each cup, and soybeans have an impressive 37% per cup too. Surprisingly, bananas that seem to get all the good press for magnesium only contain about 8%. Not bad, so definitely include them in your diet, but add the others to your grocery list too. Eating these foods are awesome, but we also need to be careful of the things that we do that can contribute to us losing magnesium, like too much coffee, alcohol, sugar, caffeine, and stress. Taking a vitamin D supplement is good if you're deficient, but also ensure you're getting magnesium through supplements or diet too, or our vitamin D supplements may not be as effective as we want. Adequate levels of magnesium in our body are necessary for the absorption and metabolism of vitamin D, important for maintaining healthy bones and teeth and supporting the body's immune system, brain, and nervous system. To see more on living well with MS or chronic illness, watch these videos next. Don't forget to sign up for my newsletter and like and subscribe under the video so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Until next time, be well.